coming up on City View. Looking to get rid of some furniture around the house? We'll tell you how you can do just that and help out veterans. Plus, welcoming females to law enforcement and want to have a say in the places and spaces that make up Austin? Our Code Next team wants to hear from you. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm your host, Marissa Monroy. Did you know that you can help the city of Austin meet its zero waste goal by keeping furniture out of landfills? If you have broken or damaged furniture, visit the Shop Zero Waste section of locallyaustin.org to find locally owned furniture repair shops that can give your furniture a second lease on life. The City of Austin's Veterans Services Office collects furniture donations for formerly homeless veterans. Visit austintexas.gov slash veterans to learn more. Businesses and nonprofits with unwanted furniture can use the Austin Materials Marketplace to connect with other local groups that can reuse it. Visit austinmaterialsmarketplace.org to learn more. Always thought of as a job for men, more and more women are choosing police work. The Austin Police Department currently has 171 female officers and is looking for more women to join the ranks. To encourage more female applicants, APD recently held a Women in Law Enforcement recruiting event. Topics included application and training requirements, balancing home and work life, and career paths and promotion opportunities. Austin is a fast-growing, diverse community, and APD offers a competitive benefits package, including health and life insurance, vacation and sick time, retirement, and many career opportunities. To learn more, visit apdrecruiting.org. Well, have you heard the news? The Household Hazardous Waste Facility and the Resource Recovery Center have merged into the Recycle and Reuse Drop-Off Center. The center now accepts many new materials such as plastic bags and plastic film, styrofoam, and all single stream recycling, including cardboard. Yeah, I do plumbing, so, and everything comes in cardboard. So. I think it's possible because we have this wonderful culture here in Austin that's different from a lot of cities. Um, we really value environmental concerns, we value things like recycling and reusing things. And so I think that Austin's able to, to, to do things that other cities aren't able to do. We accept electronics and appliances, large and small, whether it's an old washing machine or a broken television. If it plugs in, we probably accept it. Many Austinites were unsure of, of where to recycle materials such as cardboard and styrofoam. We now accept all single stream recycling, including cardboard here. We also accept plastic bags and plastic film. We will be starting to accept styrofoam as well. We will continue to accept household cleaning products, pesticides, herbicides, automotive fluids, batteries, paint, and other household hazardous waste. It's a really user-friendly facility. It directs you in different directions depending on what you have. I, the, there's free mulch, there's free paint. Um, you know, it, it drives you through basically like a U. It's a very user-friendly facility. I'm very excited that we were able to put this together. For more information about the Recycle and Reuse Drop-Off Center and what items are accepted, visit the website on your screen. Imagine Austin recently co-hosted a second Walk the Talk tour in East Austin that featured a panel discussion on missing middle housing. So what is missing middle housing? It's not a new thing. It's a thing that's already been built in many neighborhoods in Austin. They're probably in your own neighborhood right now. Duplexes, triplexes, accessory dwelling units, those kinds of housing types are really, um, were very predominant in pre-1940s Austin and in other cities in the country. So it's not a new housing type for Austin, um, but it is one that we've grown away from using. And so what we're, Code Next is endeavoring to do is to kind of bring that back as a housing choice for folks um, in an effort to make it more affordable to live here, to help manage that growth along centers and corridors. Interested in Imagine Austin? Follow them on Facebook and Twitter. The City of Austin's Code Next team has been hitting the streets to talk with Austinites about how they experience their neighborhoods. The feedback is helping the team improve Austin's land development code, which impacts places and spaces around Austin. 
the main reason uh, we were out here today is kind of twofold. One, it's a great way for us to just get out and hear from people as to what are the important issues in their neighborhoods. What are the things that we can do as a city, as a community, to make places like this perhaps even better. The second is uh, we're do getting out in the field to look at some particular areas around the city. Well, we looked at sidewalks, we talked about uh, utilities, we talked about uh, the, how, how safe uh, it is to uh, walk or bike in the neighborhood. Cars consistently parked on both sides of the streets. If you had an emergency, an emergency vehicle could, could not get down that street. So we experienced overflow parking already. Yep. Just uh, different ideas around how this area um, could possibly change in terms of uh, development. Using the bus on MLK, there's no great ways to cross the street. No crosswalks, yep. um, and especially at night when it's not as well lit, it can be a little bit frightening. We also talked about uh, how you transition from a busy corridor like MLK right here back into these neighborhoods, which oftentimes are a half block or only a block off that corridor. Home builders are having a field day building houses redeveloping, and none of them are putting in sidewalks. They're paying the fee, which is then insufficient for the neighborhood to come back and put sidewalks so that money never gets spent. So you get rid of that and you make them build a sidewalk day one. I think it's an opportunity to be more informed about what it is the city is doing so that you have an opportunity on the front end to, to know and to give input versus once you see things happening then wondering, okay, how, how did that come about? Everyone in Austin is invited to a sound check in November where the Code Next team will test develop standards around Austin and share the results. Join us for live music, food trucks, children's activities, and other information about the project with public events happening every day from November 16th to the 21st. Learn more at austintexas.gov slash code next. That's all for this week's City View. I'm your host, Marissa Monroy. Our next episode premieres Friday, November 6th. Thanks for watching.